good y'all i hope you're having a beautiful blessed day today my name is gabby if you don't know me um welcome to my channel and if you know me you've been rocking with me for a second welcome back today it's just been on my heart to talk about some reflections that i've recently come to realize about college especially since i'm going into my third um final season since i'm a sophomore so um after winter break, we're taking our final exams. And this is the last year that Princeton's gonna be like that because our summer's gonna be slightly shorter so that we end up taking our exams before winter break. And especially now that we're also transitioning into a new decade, you know, Twitter, social media as a whole hasn't really let us forget that. Um, I feel like there's a lot of new pressure or on myself, but good pressure to really be as authentic as possible and put these realizations into action plans for the future. So we're just gonna be getting a little sentimental. I dropped my oil, I was on my scalp. I just got my braids done, they are tight, tight. Um, but you know, the struggle. But I went for a burgundy this time, I've never done that. Ah, be scary. Like, I'm really scary. Like, I've never done color. Probably because of all of the terrible things that people used to say about darker skin women and color, but we're not gonna talk about that. As always, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. All that, all of that jazz. Um, If you've been doing that, thank you. Um, I notice everybody in the comments, like, I'd be trying to respond when I can, but I see y'all, I see the ones who, like, constantly comment on my stuff, constantly watch my things and talk to me about it. Like, I really appreciate that. You know, I'm not just posting it for no reason. I want y'all to talk to me. Like, I want to see what y'all have to say. And I always love when you guys, like, DM me or email me or even talk to me in person about it. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. One of the most immediate things I've really realized about college, especially this semester, is that college is not for everybody. And I always knew that, of course, you hear everybody saying it. But once you go to college and you go through things or you just even going through the motions, you realize what college is actually like. Because the expectations I have for college do not match up with the reality at all. Like I thought it was some love and basketball type stuff, even though I just watched that movie. I thought it would be more, I don't know, like groundbreaking, life-changing, but it's really not. I feel like it's more so the environments that you're in and the situations that you're put in because you're in college as opposed to necessarily the education. And that's not to say I'm not learning amazing things and stuff like that, but the trajectory that college generally sets you on, it definitely confines, um, especially creative minds into a box and it doesn't really leave a lot of avenues for you to venture out on your own. Education was set up to produce workers and not innovators, not people who create their own things, who build their own things, entrepreneurs, stuff. Um, for instance, because I have a lot of friends who don't go to college or are doing like community college, but they're establishing their own brands, they're building their own brands and learning transferable life skills through that. And college doesn't really give you that time because a lot of the time you're paying a lot for your dorm, you're paying a lot to eat, this and that. So you don't really have the space on top of like inconsiderate professors a lot of um, sometimes. And then you need to build your college resume in the first place. So you're trying to be active on campus it doesn't really leave you a lot of space unless you are really intentional about your time or you really structure it into your routine to always have time for the thing that you have on the side that's for you. Unless you're doing that, you're probably never really going to get to that um, point, at least in college. And it just made me realize that the predetermined tracks that already exist, which college would help me get into, I don't know if that is what I want. I don't know if that is what I would personally need because I'm still finding that out at the end of the day. And there's nothing wrong with taking this route, but I just think if you're in college, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Like there's constantly this back and forth of, oh, should I even be here? Should I just go out on a whim and do whatever is like really calling me and believe in myself? And then there's also this notion that I'm not doing enough now. And I feel like social media plays a big part in that because you see an eight-year-old who's making 23 million, 26 million, whatever, a year off of YouTube videos. Run me my check, like, and I'm here paying to go to college. Like, what? Big Mill tweeted it yesterday. He said, now is the easiest time ever to become a millionaire, to make a brand, to do what you have to do for yourself. So why not? 
it looks like the planet is about to end soon, you know, with the race of climate change and just what we have going on environmentally. We're very wasteful and very individualistic. So we don't know how much time longer we got. Do what you feel your heart is calling you to do in the first place. Another thing that college has taught me, especially this year, you really have to invest in yourself. You have to nourish your own spirit. You have to do what you have to do to take care of yourself. Like you really have to make it a priority. I didn't fart, that was the Fabrice thing. But you really gotta make it a priority because if not, school can stress you beyond like recognition. Like it can mess with your weight, it can mess with your mental space. It can mess with your relationships with other people because you're constantly giving to these other facets of your life, whether it be extracurricular, whether it be in your actual schoolwork, whether it be internships, but then you're not really leaving something for yourself. And that's equally as important because you can't go out into the world giving half of yourself. You deserve to be the best version of yourself that you could possibly can be at that point in time. And if things are taking away from that, if things are jeopardizing that, getting in the way of that, we reserve every right as we go into this new decade, say it with me, to cut it off, to let it go, to leave it behind. But with that comes accountability and also navigating really difficult conversations. And sometimes when we establish those boundaries for our own personal reasons, which we have every right to do, it's very hard to be on the receiving end of that because it could seem like it's out of nowhere. It could seem like it's unwarranted or like, why are you jealous? But you have to, I promise you, any real person, I was just talking about this with Michael Brown on live, but shout out to all the Stanford people. Yeah, those Stanford got some really cool people. If that person respects you and the relationship that you had and they sit and they reflect on the grand scheme of things, on the way that you guys interacted and why you would have the feelings that you do after they, of course, process their own, a lot of them are going to end up coming back and just, at least, maybe not into your life, but just coming back to express that I didn't understand it at that point in time, but now that we've matured, now that we have kind of gone on with our lives and we have a different perspective on things, I appreciate that. I respect that and leave it at that. Life is all about stages and phases and it's completely okay to outgrow people. Like sometimes I come back home and I'm like, wow, I would talk to these people in high school, but... Now we're just different people. We have different goals. We have different visions. Our energies are just not, they're not clicking anymore. But it's not necessarily that that's wrong. It's not like they're a bad person or they were, did something to me. That person's not for this phase of my life anymore because I know the person that I am today is nothing like the person that I was in high school. It's not even like the person I was last year at Princeton. And you just may not click with people on the same level anymore and that's fine. We don't have time to be investing in fruitless relationships. What What is the reason? What is the point? If we're never talking about anything, if we don't have anything in common anymore, if it's draining me to reach out to you just as much as it's draining you to reach out to me, what? just let it go. It doesn't have to be any hard feelings. We're just not gonna talk. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know, so yeah, that's kind of where I've been at. But as we go into final season, whoo -wee, it's kind of tough because we're applying for internships at the same time that we're supposed to be writing our papers at the same time that we're supposed to be studying for our exams. So that's too much. But yes, 2020 visions. Um, I have a lot of great ideas that I want to see come to fruition, but just goes back to the main theme of accountability. Like I need to hold it to myself to prioritize my own dreams, my own visions, my own plans and give myself the space to fail. Like a lot of the time I'm sitting back because I'm like, oh, I don't have this knowledge or I don't have this yet. I want everything to be completely fine before I step out of my comfort zone and try to do something. Time waits for nobody. There are people that are way more underqualified than you. There are people that have absolutely no knowledge, but they have the courage and they're willing to take that leap of faith and just see where that journey will take them. Because every experience, whether it's positive or negative, whether it's successful or unsuccessful, it teaches you something. It's like going in the shower. Like you don't come in the shower, go in the shower, soap up yourself, um, have the time of your life and then come back 
out the same person and your experiences aren't like that either because now in my head i'm gonna have those lessons i learned those connections that i made along the way all that so do it do what you want to do let's do this we're gonna embark on this journey together 2020 and from here on out not even just 2020 for the rest of our lives we're going to if we believe in ourselves if we generally feel this idea on our head and our hearts all the time we're going to go full speed we're going to make it make sure that we revisit everything in our life so that we're constantly nourishing ourselves and make space for what we want to do period so yeah with that being said i need to get back to studying but those are just my words of advice because i had a burst of motivation and inspiration to kind of know that this metamorphosis is not only happening in me, but a lot of friends around me. It really makes you reflect on who you are, what you want to invest in financially, spiritually, time-wise. Like, and you're just like, mm -mm, I don't have time to be doing all this. I don't want to do all this. I want to do stuff intentionally and with a purpose. And with good friends who care about me. And the final and just most important lesson that college has really taught me thus far, stress has really taught me thus far, breakdowns have really taught me thus far, just unnecessary stuff that you go through because of college just taught me the importance of love, self-love, platonic love, romantic love, love for one another, I don't know, love in terms of like passions for things that you have. It's so important. Love sustains you. Love grounds you. Love hurts sometimes. Like it hurts to get constructive criticism from people. But when it's from a place of love and genuinely wanting you to grow and wanting you to be a better you, it's so profound and important to have people who care about you when you don't even care about yourself. And that really relates to my New Year's resolution because of realizing how powerful love is that I really want to be a more dependable friend. Like I know I have a lot of amazing people in my life that I do consider friends, but maybe that doesn't trend. But a lot of the time that probably doesn't translate because I'm not being very proactive, texting and calling and stuff like that. But even though I say, okay, that's not necessarily my love language, which is a test that I encourage everybody to take, but that's not my love language or it's not necessarily important to me, like face-to-face -face communication and quality time is, you have to meet the people that you love in the middle ground. And the reality is that a lot of my really great friends, we don't go to school together, or you just meet people that you don't necessarily live with every single day. Like some people I've met in Peru, some people that... I've just met from childhood. Love can be very uncomfortable. It can force you, and it should force you to come outside of your comfort zone for the greater good at the end of it. So I definitely want to be more dependable. I want to be more present because everybody deserves that type of love. And I feel like the love that I have received from some people without them even knowing, I probably didn't deserve it because I wasn't being as good of a friend, as good as a, a daughter, a sister, as I should have been. So um, love is really important, y'all. Love yourself, love others. Really center that because that's the only thing that's going to get you through college. Well, not the only thing, of course. We're speaking sweeping generalizations, but love is very important. To have that support system, to have something that you're nourishing yourself with. I keep saying nourishing as if it's a buzzword, but I promise you guys, it's just become so apparent to me. Like these realizations have been weighing on my mind for a long time. So that's why I just keep, it sounds like I'm saying the same thing because it's so important. Ever since I started taking tangible steps to work on the realizations that I've been having about love, about college about the importance of having something for yourself I've changed and I've grown and I'm feeling more comfortable and closer to myself than I've ever really felt in my life and I want everybody to be able to have a transformative experience that parallels this one so yeah that's how we going into 2020 really optimistic investing in ourselves yeah that's where we're at let me know how y'all been feeling this school year thus far even if you're not in school, like, ooh, you saw my nose set. <laughs> Even if you're not in school, just let me know how you've been feeling lately. Um, if you watch to this point, ooh, I love you. Um, last question that I want everybody to answer. 
Okay. Yeah, just comment down below what your goals or visions for 2020 are so we can get a conversation going in the comments. But yeah, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and add me on Snapchat at GSC Royalty. All that jazz. Reach out to me. Say hey. Let me know that you watch my videos because I always watch my videos. Like literally, like y'all are amazing. Yeah. So yeah, as always, be sure to have a blessed day and I'll talk to y'all soon.